Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Effective Advice in the Middle of a Pandemic. I'm Brian Manning. I'm a financial advisor here in Nashville, Tennessee for Pinnacle Financial Partners. I'm joined today by Jeremy Yagel. Jeremy is a member of our finance team, and he spends most of his days lately looking at the new legislation that's been passed and thinking about how it impacts uh, both banks and the clients that we serve every day. We know these are uh, changing times, ever changing times with lots of information swirling around. And our goal with these webinars is to provide you some effective advice to take the information that's out there and to boil it down to the information that's important to you and how it impacts you and then try to give you advice on what to do with that information. So today, Jeremy is joining us to talk specifically about some of the changes to, that have been proposed to the FDIC and its impacts on banks and you as a consumer uh, from the recent passing of the CARES Act. So Jeremy, welcome. Uh, give us your perspective on some of the recent changes to the FDIC limits and uh, the changes from the CARES Act. Well, thanks for having me. And let's first start with a review of what you already have. And that is all depositors have up to $250,000 in insured funds. And since 1933, no depositor has lost a penny on FDIC insurance. So that's important. Uh, what the government did with the CARES Act is it granted the FDIC the authority to raise insurance limits on non-interest bearing deposits. We are following that closely to find out when that happened and the details of it. So we will circle back with our clients and our FAs to let them know that. Uh, it's worth noting in the last crisis that they did make for non-interest bearing deposits unlimited FDIC insurance. So that will be a key source of security for clients. If you have an interest bearing account or in the interim until the FDIC uh, authorizes the additional insurance, we have products called ICS and CEDARS. And it's worth talking to your FAs about that because those products, what they do is they leverage the FDIC insurance of other banks. We participate in a network of banks and so you can get in excess of $100 million in FDIC insured funds um, through those products. And again, no depositor has lost a dime on FDIC insured funds since 1933. So I think that's a, a good starting point. And I think the CARES Act is going to enhance what we're already doing now. Um, if you have, um, if you would like to talk with your FA um, about your FDIC insurance limits, um, the FDIC has got an electronic deposit insurance estimator. It's a good tool to find out how your accounts are structured to where, where you're getting your insurance. And so that can be a good conversation with the FDIC, with your FA, so you can find out um, how your accounts are insured. With that, Brian, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, so Jeremy, it feels like it really hasn't been that long ago since we were having some of these similar conversations back 2007, 2008, 2009, we were, we were struggling with some of these same conversations with people with an unease about banks and, and how soluble they were and, and if they could really even trust that their money was going to be there if the banking system collapsed. We're starting to have some of those same conversations today. So could you talk a little bit about the difference between where the banking institutions are today as compared to the financial crisis of of 2007, 2008, and 2009? Well, I think you touched on it. The, the last, the previous crisis, 2007 to 2009, was a financial crisis. And as a result of that, the regulators increased the capital requirements and the liquidity buffers for banks. So coming into what this being a pandemic, um, banks are in a much healthier, stronger standpoint than they were before. So I think that's a good starting point going in, that all, all depositors should, should feel good about their banks going into this crisis. Yeah, I think that's a great, uh, a great point to make that this the last recession that we experienced was, was a financial issue. And this is more of a national health crisis more than a national financial crisis, or maybe a health crisis that's causing a national financial crisis. Very true. Uh, so, Jeremy, could you expand a little bit on the the difference between the ICS and the CEDARS? I know you talked about 
how the CARES Act has given the authority to the FDIC to potentially make all non-interest bearing accounts uh, with an increased limit of coverage. Uh, but then you talked about if people have interest bearing accounts that maybe an option would be ICS or the CEDARS programs. Could you talk a little bit more about what those are and maybe equip with people some information that they can go and discuss with their financial advisor? Of course. So ICS uh, stands for Insured Cash Suite. And think of it as a solution for money market accounts or interest checking accounts. Um, so we participate in a network um, with other banks uh, to leverage the FDIC insurance. The accounts themselves are styled just like an interest checking account with the or money market account. So if you have one of those and you have balances in excess of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, then ICS will be a solution for you where you can realize additional insurance on it. Same thing on the Cedars side. Cedars, think of it just as a time deposit. So if you are looking, if you have have CDs that are rolling over. If you have CDs at multiple banks and you want to consolidate it, that's actually before this crisis, ICS and CEDARS were used a lot of times just out of convenience for the client and for FAs that you have one bank, you have you know one rate or multiple rates, however you want to determine that with your FA, but it's essentially one bank and one FA for the whole transaction. Um, so that is a, instead of having to stagger your accounts at multiple banks under $250,000, you can bring it all to one FA um, utilizing either the ICS or CEDARS product. That's great information, especially for people that might find these times to be a little concerning with respect to banks, uh, but have some individual that they feel very confident in dealing with that would give them uh, the opportunity to deal with the same person, but also make sure that all of their funds are insured. Absolutely. So, Jerry, just to be clear, um, one thing you said a minute ago is that um, the CARES Act has given the FDIC the authority to make adjustments to non interest bearing checking accounts and the amount of coverage that banks pr are provided, but that's not actually been put in place yet, correct? That's correct. We're watching for that um, to see an announcement from the FDIC to confirm that in, in what they did in the past crisis was they went to unlimited insurance on transaction accounts. So what's been proposed is unlimited insurance on non-interest bearing deposits, but they have been granted the authority to do that. And so they need to follow through with that a final determination. When that happens, we'll certainly let all of our clients and FAs know uh, that that's been done. Perfect. And if they want to monitor that themselves, the FDIC would make that information available to them on the FDIC website. Is that correct? FDIC.gov. Uh, they put out their press releases on multiple topics so that it can be viewed right there. Perfect. Well, Jeremy, is there anything else that you would leave? Uh, our clients with, uh, with respect to all of the changes that are going on, what seems like almost hourly uh, as we kind of walk through this time? You know, I think one of the most important things you can do is if your financial advisor sit down with he or she and just talk with them about your situation. Every situation might be different, but I think you'll find through the conversation that Pinnacle has a lot of different solutions for them. And so through that conversation, we can tailor it based off what your needs are. Um, so where that I think you'll find a lot of comfort um, in the conversation. Awesome. Well, Jeremy, your insight has been very helpful uh, and uh, we're thankful that you spent a little bit of time with us today. We're thankful that all of you took a few minutes of your day to uh, watch this webinar on the FDIC and some of the changes that are there. Be sure to continue to go to pnfp.com slash update. We will provide all of the updated information as we understand it and find what's important to be able to share with you and publish it to pnfp.com slash update. We know there's a lot of information that's circling out there about uh, all the things in our changing economy. And 
it's our goal to be an effective advisor to you, our client. And so continue to check back for more webinars and more information as we collect it and are ready to share it with you. Thanks for spending some time with us today. And we look forward to sharing more information with you soon.